Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You're listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kiran Mack, and thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like this video if you're watching us on YouTube, and please do subscribe. We are also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and a host of other podcast players. Now that that's all done, let's jump into today's show. And we'll start off with Thailand's daily COVID numbers. There were 9,351 new COVID-19 cases and 56 more fatalities recorded during the previous 24 hours, the Public Health Ministry announced on Sunday morning. The number of new cases dropped from the 9,742 announced on Saturday when the country recorded 74 more deaths. The Centre for COVID-19 Situation Administration said on Sunday afternoon that Bangkok led new infections with 929 cases, followed by Songkhla 682, Nakhonsi Tamara 582, Patani 511, Yala 487 and Chiang Mai 461. And yes, you can see the cases in Bangkok have really dropped from the five or 6,000 per day. So yes, there's definitely improvements and light at the end of the tunnel for a lot of central Thailand at the moment. And the first story of the day, Moderna shots to arrive in two weeks. The first lot of half a million doses of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine will arrive in Thailand in two weeks, raising the question of how they will be allocated between the two buyers. ZP Therapeutics, an affiliate of the distributor Zulik Pharma, issued a statement on Saturday on the update. First shipment of 560,000 doses would arrive no later than November 5th, the statement read. This was the first time a specific date had been given regarding the long-awaited delivery. Previously, the company broadly estimated its delivery by quarter. The firm also confirmed a total of 1.9 million doses would be delivered in the fourth quarter of this year. Another 6.8 million doses would arrive in the first quarter of next year, it said. U.S.-based Moderna also said it had applied to register a U.S.-based manufacturing facility with Thailand's Food and Drug Administration on October 20 to ensure uninterrupted deliveries of the vaccine to the country. The news raised the question of how the first batch would be allocated to the two purchasers, private hospitals and the Thai Red Cross Society. Both placed their orders to the government pharmaceutical organization, although the Red Cross is one of the few agencies authorized to buy the vaccine by itself. The private hospital took orders for the mRNA vaccine from people in June, charging them 3,300 Thai baht for two doses. Since the vaccine will come in batches, the private hospitals association said earlier that it would allocate the quota it gets from each each lot to member hospitals, 10,000 shots for all 227 hospitals in the first round and then proportionally based on their demand in the second round. It is then up to each hospital to decide which customers get vaccinated first but must use the first payee system. According to Zulik's statements and publicly available report, Thailand has to date placed five orders for the Moderna vaccine. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how exactly they plan to allocate this to people. I mean, a lot of people have been waiting. A lot of people have actually everybody who's ordered have had to pay it up front. So, yeah, well, I'd be really interested to see. And I hope it's a transparent system. But you know how things roll around here sometimes, too. And next up, government talks up new, more efficient Thailand Pass. The Foreign Affairs Ministry is rolling out a campaign to promote the use of the new Thailand Pass system, which will replace certificate of entry for visitors to Thailand when the country reopens on November 1. Tani Sankrat, spokesman for the ministry, said that since April 2020, the ministry has approved more than 400,000 COE requests by Thai nationals and foreign visitors for travel to Thailand. Now that the government will reopen the country, the Department of Consular Affairs has collaborated with the Digital Government Development Agency to develop the Thailand Pass system, a web-based system for Thai and foreign travellers to fill in their travel and health information and upload related documents before travelling. The new system will help reduce unnecessary procedures and visitors can register on tp.consular.co.th from November 1, Mr. Tani said, who also serves as Director General of the Ministry's Department of Information. He said the Department of Consular Affairs and Thai embassies and consulates and foreign countries are testing the new system to get a good grasp before it's officially launched on November 1. Thai embassy and consulates will change their original role of issuing the COE to publicizing and giving advice on the registration of the Thailand Pass system. This means there will be no more process of seeking their approval, Mr. Tani said. The ministry, Thai embassies and consulates all over the world are stepping up campaigns to promote the country's reopening and explain the requirements for arrivals from 46 countries and one territory without quarantine as well as arrivals under the sandbox and alternative quarantine program, he said. The Thailand Pass system is a web-based 
based system designed to make the documentation process for travelers entering Thailand more efficient than the COE application and by collecting both travel and health information and facilitating the filling of TM6 and T8 forms. The Thailand Pass is required for all fully vaccinated Thais and foreign travellers from the 46 low-risk countries listed by the government, as well as those who enter Thailand under the Sandbox program or who have not yet been vaccinated or received only one shot and enter Thailand under the Alternative Quarantine program. Well, there you go, some more information. Now, actually, I will say that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has done a decent job trying to convey the message out there, but it has been thwarted by every other idiot agency that's out there. I mean, last night, the... Civil Aviation Authority of Thailand issued the regulations for entering the country and they posted the wrong website. They posted that you had to have travel insurance from a Thai company, which wasn't true at all. They posted that you needed a COE, which you don't need, and that the QR code need, was needed along with the COE. And when you arrived, you had to re reproduce all the documents that you submitted to get your Thailand pass, which has already been noted that you don't have to do that, hence why you're getting a QR code. They've discussed that the process that the air Airport should take 10 to 15 seconds for scanning your Q QR code and checking your passport and that should be it. Unfortunately, there are so many agencies and ministries that seem to want to jump into the limelight and produce a graphic, infographic, you know, for people to read. I don't know why this is allowed and it causes utter confusion. And people at this moment in time, I'll be very frank with people, if I was abroad right now thinking of coming to Thailand under the Thailand Pass, I'd wait till December. I'd skip November because to be quite frank and honest, you need to let time go through because there's going to be so many kinks in this system and so many things they haven't thought about that are going to pop up that you're better just waiting until December and don't just book straight away to, to come because I, I just know the way things are done here that it will have issues at the beginning and, and you don't want to get caught up in these issues. But nevertheless, um, a little bit of information that I read today and I saw is expats in Thailand who wish to go back home, let's say for a holiday and then come back. Maybe they're employed here, for example. Um, it has been announced that you can use your SSO, that's your, you know, your social security payments and then you'll be under the Thai medical system. Uh, you can use that as your insurance. So you don't need to purchase extra insurance if you're a working expat in Thailand and pay social security and are covered under the Thai medical government fund. And our next story, government ramps up reopening plan. Night entertainment venues will remain closed in 17 provinces during the initial stage of the country's reopening to vaccinated foreign visitors from 46 countries next month. Meanwhile, the nighttime curfew imposed to help curb the spread of COVID-19 will be lifted in the 19 provinces, including Bangkok on October 31st. Tanakorn Wangbung Konchana, the government spokesman, said that Thailand is ready to welcome back fully vaccinated foreign visitors from 46 countries from November 1, but it remains to be seen how many of them will arrive. The CCSA is waiting for information from the Foreign Affairs Ministry and the Tourism and Sports Ministry, Mr. Tanakorn said. We have announced an initial list of 46 countries, when and whether any of them will re arrive remains to be seen. We are waiting for information, Mr. Tanakorn said. On Thursday evening, Prime Minister Prayat chan cha posted on Facebook that Thailand will reopen the country to visitors from 46 countries instead of only 10 COVID-19 low-risk countries announced earlier starting from November 1. He did not name the countries in the post at the time, but wrote it was now necessary to speed up the opening. Visitors from the 46 countries, described as the first low-risk group, may enter Thailand by air without quarantine provided they are fully vaccinated and have evidence of pre-flight negative test results. They must also agree to take another test upon arrival. The Prime Minister also ordered an end to the curfew in 17 provinces, including Bangkok, from the October 31st to support the reopening of the country. The order was published in the Royal Gazette late on Thursday night. It said the COVID-19 situation in the country was improving, with stable new caseloads and faster patient recovery, and it was necessary to revive the national economy. The curfew will therefore end at 11 p.m. on October 31st in the 17 sandbox provinces that have been declared maximum and strict control zones, but which have tourism significance and are designated for reopening. The number of people at public gatherings in the tourist reopening zones will be capped at 500. Entertainment venues in the 17 areas will remain closed, including pubs, bars and karaoke shops, but operators and officials could begin preparing for the reopening.
The no quarantine measures apply to arrivals by flights at Suvnaboom, Damuang, Chiang Mai, Phuket, Samui, Utapo Airport, and chartered flights at Buriam Airport. Arrivals on other kinds of flights must enter sandbox programs in, for example, Phuket, Koh Samui, Koh Phangan, and Krabi under the same initial post arrival conditions, but with further tests six or seven days later. However, the president of the Tourism Council of Chambari said that some foreign visitors may still be reluctant to visit due to other limitations. For example, if tourists from China visit Thailand when they return, to their country, they will have to be quarantined for 14 or 21 days in some cities, he said. Another unanswered question that may deter tourists is whether the Thailand Plus tracing app will replace the certificate of entry, he said, adding that the list of 46 countries does not include Russia, whose citizens make up most tourists in Pattaya. Now, to be honest, I don't know what he's talking about when he speaks about the Thailand Plus app and the certificate of entry. They're completely two different things. And this is what I talk about in relation to what's going on at the moment. There needs to be one spokesperson for this whole re-entry process happening on November 1. Because there's just too many people trying to get themselves into the news. And it needs to stop. There needs to be one set of rules published. And that is the only set of rules that should be quoted. Because it's too important for people to be getting mixed messaging each and every day. And people and government agencies and government ministers are continuously doing it right now. Now, in relation to the Rio, I definitely think there won't be a huge demand at the beginning and it will probably build up January or February. I think most people who are going away for, you know, November, Christmas have already booked their holidays and will skip Thailand this year. But you will see some people make the trip. I note that the likes of uh, Tui have begun to put back on their charter flights to Thailand from the end of November until, you know, December. So that's a very good thing. And it will certainly bring a steady flow of customers during that time here so you know that's definitely a positive part of all of this travel agents have been waiting for good news still i'm a little worried that they are going to maybe over complicate this whole thailand pass and we're really not getting something easier we're just getting you know a renaming of the certificate of entry we'll have to see what happens on november 1 in relation to thailand pass what i'll definitely do is when it comes online i'll try to go through it and we'll see what exactly they're looking for and is there anything on it that we weren't aware about up until then but anyway we'll go on to our next story And up next, international airlines return 80% of their airport slots in Thailand for the next five months. International airlines have returned as many as 80% of their airport slots at Thailand's six international airports between October 31 and March 26 next year, indicating uncertainty over a recovery in the aviation sector, according to the Managing Director of Airports of Thailand Public Company. AOT operates Sunanabum, Don Muang, Phuket, Hat Yai, Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai's May Fa Long International Airports. He disclosed that the lowest point for the aviation industry in Thailand was from July to September this year, after the Thai government suspended all regular flights as a precautionary measure to contain the COVID-19 pandemic, during which average daily arrivals at the six international airports was only 50 passengers. The situation has improved since Thailand eased travel restrictions in October this year, with an average of 30,000 arrivals a day. Airlines have given up 100% of their slots in Don Muang Airport and about 70% of their slots at Sunanaboom, he said. AOT suffered 11 billion baht in operational losses in the first nine months of this year and an estimated 10 million baht for the whole year, he said, adding that businesses over the next two years will, however, gradually recover. The Director of Commercial Affairs for the VJet airline said that the aviation industry is still in crisis, although the situation is improving. Airport slots represent permission granted to an airline by the owner of an airport to use the airport's facilities for landing and take off. Now, some of those international airlines are also some of the domestic, such as Air Asia and VJet and I think Nok Air fly a few international flights as well. So a number of them have returned. But as you can see, I think we really are not looking at a huge uptick in international tourism in the next few months. It's it's going to be a long, drawn out recovery. And I think these kind of figures point in that direction for sure. Clusters prompt November 1 fears. Chiang Mai has reported a rise in its daily COVID-19 caseloads fueled by the recent detection of new infection clusters. Meanwhile, a similar surge in infections in Hua Hin and Pramburi districts of Prechip Kiri Khan has led to calls for the reopening of the seaside resort to be pushed back from November 1. On Saturday in Chiang Mai, new infections topped 461 with two deaths. Of this number, five were infected from outside the province, according to the Provincial Communicable Disease Office. The daily tally has been rising steadily in recent days. 
Saturday's figures saw the total reach 9,660 since the beginning of July. The office said most sufferers are in green groups, those who exhibit little or no symptoms. Chiang Mai has vaccinated 934,051 residents, or 74% of its population. Sangyat Kam Chai, head of the disease control unit at the provincial public health office, said several major clusters have been detected in the province in recent days. Kun Udam, advisor to the Hua Hin Cha Am Tourism Business Association, said local businesses were concerned the long weekend could send infections surging. Many have headed to resorts in Hua Hin district where occupancy rates are in excess of 80%. Some clusters have occurred in Hua Hin already. Mr Udan said that if possible, the November 1 reopening should be postponed until December to protect the public's health. And this is what you're going to see for the next few weeks. I'm not sure if they would or can postpone the Hua Hin or the Chiang Mai reopening, but it could be on the cards the way things are sounding in relation to the infections in both those areas. It's very unfortunate too for them because the infections have only come about in the last week or so. I think a lot of it has to do with people getting a little bit complacent as well and maybe standards slipping in relation to control of the virus. You know, when you have a lot of people heading down for holidays, people are in a good mood. They're out to enjoy themselves and these things are going to happen. Do I think they should postpone it? I think no. I think it would send a bad message out to the international community and the people considering going to Hua Hin and whatnot. But then again, if you're quarantine free, what's to stop you from going there? I think it really only applies to whether or not it wants to participate in the blue zones. And I suppose they could cut it from the blue zone quite quickly because I think a lot of people who will be coming will be coming under the quarantine free anyway. So it really doesn't matter. And finally, Thailand using prisoners to make unproven herbal medicine for COVID-19. Remand facilities across the country are using prisoners to produce herbal medicine that allegedly helps fight against COVID-19 symptoms, an official said on Thursday. Ayut Sitapat, the Director General of the Department of Corrections, said that the prisoners have produced 20 million Andrographis panuculata capsules to treat COVID-19 cases. The herbal medicine will be distributed to communities and other people. Locally known as Fa Talai John, it has not been extensively studied in peer-reviewed papers. One study in the Critical Review of Food Science and Nutrition found the herb to have low potency and possibly negative impact on metabolism. However, according to Somsak Tep Kusitan, the current Minister of Justice, the herb is an effective remedy for COVID-19. Each inmate is entitled to receive a minimum of 50 tablets for the treatment. He stated that planting Fa Talai John helps inmates develop skills that they can use after their release. Now, I don't know what the qualifications are of the Minister of Justice, but I'm pretty sure he's not a doctor or medically qualified to be giving any kind of advice in relation to COVID-19 treatments. And yes, this is kind of disturbing to think that they're having inmates reproduce this drug for COVID-19 with no peer-reviewed studies and no proof that it actually works at all. And finally, some quick news headlines of the day. Man 71 beaten heavily in gold shop robbery. A 71-year-old gold shop owner suffered head injuries when he was beaten heavily on the head by a piece of wood brandished by a robber in his home in Phuket Town last night. We can't go back to our old ways, Phuket Marine Industry cautioned. Phuket's marine industry has been cautioned against returning to pre-COVID business strategies following hard lessons learned in surviving the pandemic. And finally, push for Russia, India to be added to the quarantine list. Tourism operators and major travel areas are urging the government to include more countries in the quarantine free list, particularly Russia and India, to drive demand in the upcoming high season. But ultimately, with this story or anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Now keep that conversation going. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and do all the good stuff that does help that YouTube algorithm. But ultimately, my name is Kira Mack. You've been listening to the Thai Expat Daily Show, and we will see you next time.